He was drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the early 90s, but he held onto a secret throughout his playing career. Lance Allen shows us how he is now hoping to help bring change following his career. In 1991, Esra Tuolo held a well-kept secret. I needed to sort of like um, hide myself even further and, and go back deeper into the closet. The Packers took the defensive lineman 35th overall in the second round that season. You know, Lance, I just focused on the moment and the present. I knew if I did well in the moment, everything else would fall in place. And started all 16 games his rookie year, even sacking Randall Cunningham in his first game. May take off, and then again he may not. As Sarah Tua Olo. Yet he says he couldn't enjoy it. Uh, instead of being happy and excited, I blacked out because I heard my name echo through the stadium. As Sarah Tua and all I was thinking about was somebody was going to out me and all this, this would just go away. As I was living this double life. I needed to sort of hold my tongue, walk into uh, the locker rooms and transform myself into somebody I wasn't, a straight man. There's bounties out there, right, against players and stuff. I mean, how much would it be for the gay player, right, back in those days to take him out? One of his favorite memories on the field was a non-playing moment, singing the national anthem. What was it like to show that side of yourself? People were thinking, were you like so worried and stuff and nervous? I said, yes, I was absolutely nervous. But I said I wasn't nervous about singing. I was nervous because my idol, uh, Mike Singletary, we were playing the Bears at that game, was watching me. Tuolo only lasted two years in Green Bay. Why did you decide for the rest of the 90s to go to the dark side and go to Minnesota? Ah, well, if we really want to be honest, uh, you know, and I don't think this this story has been told. After my rookie year, I went down to with Brett, uh, Brett Favre and we went down to his hometown and we got uh, we got arrested. He spent nine seasons in the NFL, but his post Super Bowl loss with the Falcons came with another emotional moment. I couldn't share myself to the world, right? And it was crazy that those are memories you can't get back. You know, coming back, I was in the back of the bus and guys were going off the bus and they're hugging and they're kissing their wives and their girlfriends. And and I'm walking past my partner, giving him a, you know, giving him the, the signal to meet me in the room, right? Not being able to express my feelings at the time, which was, I just wanted to cry. And I remember putting my fist to the wall because I was so upset and I was so angry that I had that I neglected him and then our relationship. Post-retirement, Tuolo came out in 2002 and feels the NFL is doing a good job with LBGTQIA plus issues better than when he started. The worst thing that you could do, you know, in the NFL back in those days wasn't like to sell drugs or get, you know, or domestic abuse, you beating up your wife or your girlfriend. It was about someone outing you or someone starting a rumor that you were gay. And it was sort of like, you know, that was the worst thing. In retirement, Tuolo made a run on The Voice and founded the organization HateIsWrong.org. I was bullied when I was a little kid. I was molested. And so it's, I don't ever want anyone to feel like that anymore. Lance Allen, TMJ4 Sports.